Hey guys, this is John Anthony Radosta, and I'm an enterprise cloud solutions architect here at Dido, a Google Premier partner specializing in Google Cloud Platform, G Suite, and Google Maps API services. So I want to do a quick video today to talk a little bit about hybrid cloud architecture. What is it? How does it work? Do we need it? Is it expensive? Uh, I'm going to be answering all this and more as well as doing a quick demo on how a hybrid cloud solution would work. So the reason why public cloud really has gotten big over the last few years and continues to grow is because companies are realizing that downtime is very costly. And actually there's a study on it back in 2014 done on most of the major companies as to how much downtime can actually cost a company. I'm going to scroll down to this table here that I found very interesting. Uh, this is actually a table of... Uh, about 38 major companies, uh, how much downtime they had in, a, in the particular year, in the year in question is 2014, and how much that cost them. So you have companies like Netflix that have a 99.863% uptime, but they were still, that means they were still down for 24 hours. That downtime ended up costing them $4.8 million or an average of $200,000 per hour. That's very, very expensive. So hybrid cloud architecture is, is sort of moving towards reducing these downtime uh, error rates and basically allowing us to recover a lot of that um, unnecessary loss in revenue or, or costs and things like that. So uh, one of the reasons public cloud providers emerged is because they're looking to solve this sort of problem that's kind of inherent with on-premise data centers. So things that like single points of failure, natural disasters, even power outages, things that can often happen with on-premise data centers can be replicated in public cloud with a little bit more resiliency and fault tolerance. But at the end of the day, the problem with that is, is that public cloud is still just data centers. So they still have things that can go wrong with them, just like on-premise data centers, even if it isn't as often. In case in point, I'm actually going to bring up one of these articles. Uh, back in 2017, uh, AWS's S3 service had an outage that was so bad that Amazon couldn't even get into its own dashboard to warn people. So this isn't a knock against AWS. AWS is great, but it goes to show you that even when it comes to public cloud services, things can go wrong, and Murphy's Law is very much in effect here. In fact, the S3 outage wasn't the only time cloud services have gone down. There's been seven major... Uh, cloud outages for AWS alone, as well as other public cloud providers have had um, same things happen as well. So the industry is moving towards public cloud as a way to increase fault tolerance for on-premise data centers. How do we provide fault tolerance for public cloud? And the answer is hybrid cloud architecture. So uh, hybrid cloud architecture is nothing more than architectural design patterns that spread our dependencies from one public cloud to another. That way we get uh, additional fault tolerance to all of our digital assets in the case of a cloud outage like we saw uh, with S3. Uh, I wanted to, to do a quick demo of how hybrid cloud architecture would work. I built a simple web application uh, using Go and uh, some Go templates here. And it's basically, I call it the Golang Art Gallery. So as you can see here, we only have one piece of art in our art gallery, the Mona Lisa. She was very expensive. We didn't really have anything left over after we bought her. So that's all we got. But as you can see here, this is the Go file. Uh, it's just a basic web server running uh, on port 8097. Um, we're injecting dependencies into a Go template. We've got a CSS file that's being injected dynamically as well as our Mona Lisa image here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to pull up this next, um, this next diagram here. Is Using Terraform, we're going to go from our local host web server here, just sort of our development environment, we're going to run one command, terraform apply, and we're going to get a, an entire highly available VPC production infrastructure serving static assets from S3 with some uh, failover fault tolerance from Google Cloud. So just to show you how Terraform works, I'm going to pull up the hybrid cloud uh, Terraform file here. So as you can see here, we've got some providers here, public cloud providers, Google Cloud, AWS. Uh, we're doing some stuff like spinning up instances. We're bootstrapping them with some bash scripting, like things that like in, installing Go, installing Git, building the Go binaries, and then launching the web server. We've got application load balancers. We've got listeners on the balancers, security groups, subnetting, you name it. This entire infrastructure is going to be built up in about a minute and a half through Terraform just by running this one command Terraform apply. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to go in here, Terraform apply. 
And I'm actually going to fast forward a little bit just so you can see how Terraform will do this at an accelerated rate. You don't have to wait and watch this whole thing. But what we're going to get is we'll get uh, links to all the resources that Terraform is going to provision. And we'll see exactly how we can use those resources to fail over to another public cloud provider in the case that Terraform, uh, in the case that we have a service outage on S3 or something like that. So we click yes, and Terraform's going to start to do its bootstrapping job here, building all these. Uh, production resources. So I'm going to fast forward now a little bit. Okay, it looks like Terraform has finished provisioning our production environment. It took just over three minutes and 20 seconds for it to do all the assets. Uh, I have some output links here in, in terms of uh, static asset files. I also have a DNS for one of my load balancers. But before we uh, go look at the application, let's take a look at what Terraform did. So in my Google Cloud Platform console, Terraform created a bucket and it uploaded our uh, static files, including the Mona Lisa. We also have static files over on S3, and on EC2, we have two instances, uh, T2 micros running in two different regions. You can forget about these ones. These are just uh, tests that I was doing prior to this video. And I also provisioned, well, Terraform provisioned uh, a load balancer, uh, as well as a target group that's uh, distributing traffic to both of our instances. So if I go back here, I'm going to open my, um, I'm actually going to use an incognito window in, in uh, Chrome here. But I'm going to open the DNS for our load balancer. And here we can see our production environment uh, of our Golang Art Gallery. So if I open inspect uh, and I look at uh, our source file here, I can see that the Mona Lisa is coming from S3. So here's what we're going to do. We're really going to uh, see how hybrid cloud architecture really kind of shines here. So we're going to simulate an S3 outage here. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually just going to delete the Mona Lisa off of S3. And we're going to see how uh, our architecture responds to that service outage. So I'm actually going to copy and paste this. I'll close this. And the reason why I'm using incognito is so we're uh, disabling any sort of browser caching. So that way, every time we load the web page, uh, we're going to uh, be re-requesting re the, the asset from uh, cold storage, basically. It's not going to be cached in the browser. So I just deleted the Mona Lisa. Uh, we're going to give our application about 5 or 10 seconds to respond to that. And if I go back and I open an incognito window, and I go back to my load balancer, here she is. She's still there. So how is that possible? How did, we just deleted the Mona Lisa from S3. We saw that that's where the source file was coming from. What happened here? Let's look at our uh, source file here. Let's look at the elements. We'll open the body tag. And we'll see that our application failed over to Google Cloud, which is pretty cool. So this is what resiliency and fault tolerance is all about, is that we had little to zero downtime here for our application to fail over. And that's a combination of using the right uh, VPC architecture with Terraform and orchestrating the cloud, but it's also uh, how we develop the application. So, and here's a quick diagram just showing you exactly what our application did in our production environment when we had a service outage to S3. Uh, immediately, our application detected that S3 was unhealthy and it failed right over to Google Cloud and started serving those static assets right from our Google Cloud bucket instead. The other question I want to answer that we get a lot is, okay, we want to use a hybrid cloud architecture, John. Is it more ex expensive? Are we going to double our cloud spend? So there's a few different scenarios for disaster recovery. I'm going to sort of, sort of show you here. So there are some companies that do like to have a completely replicated uh, cloud environment um, in two different cloud providers. It's obviously the highest cost. So if you have 30 different uh, virtual machines running, uh, in AWS, you'd have 30 virtual machines running um, in Google Cloud Platform as well. Uh, this is the multi-site example. It gives you uh, the lowest RTO and RPO recovery time. Uh, then there's also other scenarios too that we also see. We see a warm standby. We see a pilot light where the cost is going to be a lot less for these, but maybe it's going to take a, maybe a few more minutes to kind of get everything up to speed. So if you hypothetically had 30 VMs running on AWS and maybe five database servers, maybe you'd have you know 10 to 15 VMs running on Google Cloud and maybe one or two database servers that you could quickly scale up in the event of a failover and you could actually program that logic into your applications. So 
So that is our demo on Terraform and hybrid cloud architecture. I hope you guys enjoyed our demo today. If you have any questions or you're interested yourselves in a hybrid cloud architecture or maybe just some consulting in terms of how it might work for you as well as some cost implications, uh, you can reach out to us here at DitoWeb.com. Just click the Let's Talk button and one of our cloud engineers, myself, or one of our great account executives uh, can reach out to you and we can get started on uh, scoping something out for you that works in both cloud environments, whether it's an on-premise in Google Cloud or Google Cloud and some other public cl uh, cloud provider. So take care. I hope you have a great day and I hope to hear from some of you soon.